Okay, here I am with my Yeti 1000 Lithium Gold Zero. Um, I'm charging it right now, even though it doesn't need to be charged, it's sitting at 100%. I've got an iPad 3 here. I've had it for some time. Um, just let I'm going to charge it because I'm sitting at, let's see, 21%. So anyway, I'm going to show you what it does here. I'm going to charge it here. And it uses 0.8 amps of output. And if you press this input, this units button here, it changes the output is now or nine watts. So I'm at nine watts. And since I'm at 100% full, my battery is full, it's not showing that I'm bringing in anything. It's, so it's kind of just sitting here. Um, in a little bit when I start when this hundred comes down a little bit, then it'll start inputting again. So output, if you want to look at watt, watt hours, this is 183 uh, watt hours of output. And um, do it again. It's at 12.5 uh, uh, volts in it. Output again is at 0.7. And right now we have 99.9 .9 hours until this thing is empty at the current rate that we're at right now. Um, so that's what it takes to power amp-wise. Let's change it over to watts. It's easier to just look at watts because we're at a thousand watts. Uh, hold on. Well, wrong thing. Sorry. Ten watts. So it uses it's using ten watts, I think, because this just turned on. The screen turned on. So if you're just going to charge without using it, it's going to use about 8 or 9 watts. Again, this is an iPad 3. So I'm going to leave that charging. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take, take it off. And I'm going to turn off that little section of it. Again, this is my Domet, uh, not a Dometic, this is a Coleman. This is a Coleman cooler. Um, it is an electric cooler. I usually use this um, to transport all my all my cold items from the house to my RV, um, and I usually don't turn my turn on my uh, refrigerator before beforehand. So this thing just runs the entire time in the back of my truck until we get to the until we get to the um, to the RV, and even after then, because I've got a, a residential type refrigerator in there, which um, doesn't get any power to it until uh, we get to our campsite that has electricity. So we use this until we get to where we're going and the refrigerator in the RV has cooled down. So um, I used to run this on my Yeti 400 non-lithium and it used to pull out 60 watts. On a 400 that gave me about three hours worth of, you know, uh, cooling time before I started going beyond the 50% barrier of the 400 watts. So, um, and you know, if you go beyond the, the 200 watts of power, uh, then you kind of start ruining your battery at that point. So I tried not to get it below half of its uh, battery life. And that's why I bought the 1000 lithium because you can, you can run this down all the way to zero and it won't hurt your battery. And, uh, this was, of course, double the cost of, of that one, but I do get 100 amp hours of runtime with this versus 35 amp hours divided, you know, divided by two, about 17 and a half amp hours really is what I was getting out of the other one. So this is really the cost effective way to go. And plus, you know, it was just a thousand dollars and it's only available at Costco. It's not even on Gold Zero's website. So uh, that being said, um, with this Coleman, uh, refrigerator uh, or electric whatever cooler however you want to call it it comes with standard it comes with a 12 volts adapter so if you put this into your 12 volts and you you have to turn this on in order to start your inverter this thing takes about 50 watts of power um, it'll come down a little bit it's hit it hovers it between 50 and 51 when it's all up and going so and I don't know if you can hear this thing running, but uh, anyway, here's the little motor where it's at right now. 
that's that part of it. Now, like I said, this will come down to about 50 or 51. But to show you that when you have two items that can go either, you know, you, you either use the AC or it has the option to go 12 volt, you want to try both to see which is better because some they are sometimes considerably different. So here is my adapter for this. I'm going to pull this out of here, turn this off. I'm sorry, I've only got my one, one hand to do this with, but um, hold on. Okay, I plugged that back, that into there, and I've got my one, my 110 here, or 120. I'll put it in here now. And if you recall, the other one I was telling you was going to go down to about 50 or 51, because I've already tested this. This is going to hover somewhere around 79 or 80, or, you know, who knows. But anyway, 75. Let's just say 75, and the other was going to do, um, um, 50. So this is 25 more watts of power being used going through the AC portion of it. So I know that when I run this particular Coleman that I'm not going to use this. So you want to test everything you get, um, especially if they have two options of, of charging it, of, of actually running the product. So I'm going to go and turn this off. And like I said, um, so I know that on this, that the way I'm going to run it is through my 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter. And um, this, of course, we know only goes through USB. Then, well, actually it doesn't. I can go and put one, put an adapter here. So let me go get an adapter. Okay, I'm going to use my Apple adapter. You know, they give you these little cheesy squares and they don't put out... 2.4 amps, but let's go ahead and put this in here. And we saw it earlier, putting it through the USB, it was giving me um, seven, seven watts. Right now you can tell that as soon as I turn this on, the inverter is already costing me four watts just by turning this, this portion on. So if I just leave that on, you know, it's going to, it'll end up draining my battery. It's going to take a long time to do it, you know, but it can drain your battery if you leave this on because that's telling your inverter to turn on. So anyway, it's already starting off with four. Now we'll put that in there. And remember this said it was seven or eight to say eight. So let's see that goes up to 12. And this will go up to 12. And it turned on. This, so I'm going to turn this off because we're going to charge without using it. Yes, so I start out with a four. You're still going to charge with seven or eight. So in this case, whenever I just need to do my iPads, I know I'm not going to use this because I'm, it's charging me an extra four, four watts just to turn this panel on. So if I can turn off that panel there, take this out of here, turn this one back on. See how it doesn't charge me anything to turn that little USB one on? And put this back in, and I can use any one of those. Then this thing turned back on again. And it charges me about eight watts. It'll go back down. It fluctuates between seven and, and nine, so it's gonna charge about eight. Let me see if I do it again. And go back in. And I just turned off the screen on my iPad. So, like I said, you're 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 saving a little bit of a little bit of wattage by going using charging this through the USB. Now, here's my MacBook Pro. I've got this is a 2004 late 2014 model. So let me get my charge cord for that. Yeah, I've got a lot of mess. Lots of electronics. It's my son over there. He continuously uh, is on that, um, on his little iPhone 5. And we use Anchor products. I found that these are very economical and uh, they charge, they'll charge his iPhone 5 like seven times. And this is, I think, a 16,000. Um, it holds 16,000 watts or whatever you want to call it. Not watts, but whatever, milliamps. Um, Okay, 
So this is the cord to my, I'll take this off of there, turn that off. I'm gonna turn this back on and I'm going to start charging my MacBook Pro. Uh, might be at 100% here, I'm not really sure. So let me see. Yeah, I'm at 72% here and it is charging. And this thing is saying that um, it's using about, well, let's see, it's still climbing. So 57, 56, let's say 57 watts. It's using 57 to, okay, well, we're at 60. Okay, and that's with the screen glowing. So, um, because if I was gonna be using it, it's gonna be using about 58 watts or whatever. So let me turn this off. My screen just turned off. That's what happened there. So I'm closing. I close my my MacBook Pro, and while I'm not using it, if I just want to charge it, um, we're looking at 54 watts. It's what it's using about 52 to 54 watts. And the way this works is it tells you if you're gonna run this that long, you have about 19 hours, 19 almost 20 hours to run this. Although we know that it's not going to take 19 hours to uh, charge my MacBook Pro, maybe a couple of hours. So, anyhow, this is the only way you can charge this. It's not going to be able to let us charge it through USB. Now, it may let us charge it through a 12 volt, but I don't have that connection. Maybe I'll get that connection and see uh, what it does, whether or not it's less than 50, 50 watts. Again, I'm going to open this up. And as soon as I opened it up and I got power to this to my screen, this jumped up by about 10 watts. So I'm going to say that if I were to run my, um, my computer while I'm charging, it's going to be about 60. Uh, let's see, where are we at? It'll be about 62 watts. About, it's going to cost me 10 watts more in order to use my computer while I'm charging. So anyway, um, the other thing this thing will let you do is, I'm not inputting anything right now, but it's going to tell me um, my output is about 188 watt hours. And then it's got 12.4 volts. My output is 4.7, 4.6 amps. Now what I'm gonna do is, see right now it hasn't charged, it's not inputting anything because I'm still at 100%. If you press that, my battery's at 100%. So it can't bring in any electricity to charge this because I'm at 100% still. When I'm no longer at 100%, then my input will turn back on. So right now it's a lot of wasted energy. If I had solar panels, then it'd just be wasted energy because we have nowhere else to store it when this is full. So if you're going to add solar panels, just kind of know what you're going to be using because you don't want to overbuy. You're so, you know, purchase more solar panels than are necessary unless you're just trying to charge really fast. If you're going to have surge time, like during the day, then you may want to put in a whole lot of watts if you're pulling a lot out. Anyhow, um, when another thing that I can show you is my eye, is my, um, my iPhone, let's see, let's see, you have your iPhone? Go wait. Okay, let me record, where's the cord? Okay, here's my son's um, iPhone 5, and I've already checked my iPhone 6 Plus, this is what I've got, and it runs, it uses, um, eight watts. I'm going to change this back to watts because I like using watts. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Pull that off of there. And I'm going to now put an iPhone on here. This is not the big one with the big... Oh, I'm sorry. I've only got... iPhone 5 is not as big as an uh, iPhone 6 Plus. But, um... Let's see what it takes to do an iPhone 5 because the screen is smaller. So it's just taking four watts to charge the iPhone 5. Uh, and it takes eight watts to, it's just as much 
to um, charge this iPad is what it takes to do an iPhone 6 Plus. So I'm going to guess that an iPhone 6 with a smaller screen, if the screen is on, is going to take about 3 watts. I mean about 7 watts. Um, anyhow, that's all I've got for right now. So um, I'll have more things to test. I'm looking at getting a Dometic 65 or a 95 that I'd like to test on here. And because um, those have the freezer capability. I'm also looking to check on different fans to run on on this lithium and see which one has the better because I'm kind of buying and taking stuff back. It's a bad thing, but I guess it's, you know, you got to do what you got to do to make sure that we get the right things so that we're not pulling so much uh, wattage and we can keep our batteries running longer, especially during the times that we don't have solar input. Um, what I'm going to try to do, because I've never done this before, is trying to figure out what, um, how many solar panels I can add, add to this uh, unit without frying it or whatever. But um, anyway, I've already gone way over 15 minutes, so um, if you have any questions, leave comments below. And please subscribe.